Main article. Second mission to Raxus Prime. I have recruited others to my cause, but now I need your counsel. My allies seek a major strike against the Empire. The Emperor rules the galaxy through fear. You must destroy a symbol of that fear. The Empire is building star destroyers above Raxus Prime. That shipyard is your next target. Starkiller and Darth Vader Juno and Proxy conceived of the plan of attack for destroying the Star Destroyer shipyard. On the surface of Raxus Prime was a colossal ore cannon used to fire raw materials into low orbit for retrieval and use within the shipyard, and Starkiller would simply commandeer the cannon and fire it directly at the shipyard, destroying it in the process. As Starkiller prepared to depart, Ram Kota inquired as to whether there has been any mention of Kazdan Paratus. Juno informed him no and Starkiller hid his apology behind a display of sympathy, though Kota brushed it off. While Starkiller progressed across the treacherous terrain cautiously, he did so with less vigor than usual, being distracted by various things. He was now giving serious thought to a future with Juno, rather than accepting it as a given as he had up until this point. His reverie was interrupted when Juno informed him of activity in his area, Drexel Rusha's gang. Chiding himself for getting distracted, Starkiller began paying more attention to his surroundings. As he picked his way through the planetary junkyard, he began seeking out the old network of sewers that lay under the lower levels of trash heap. Finding a way in, he progressed much more quickly, only twice needing to find an alternate route due to cave-in. As he neared the massive ore cannon, he began looking for a way out. As he ascended, he was ambushed by Drexel Roosh and his gang. Roosh was looking for revenge against Starkiller for bringing the Empire down on Raxus Prime. Kazdan Paratus and his droids had kept the Imperials at bay for years, and his death had allowed them to move in. Now Roosh and his gang had nothing to salvage or excavate, as the Empire simply got there first. Roosh ordered his cronies to open fire on Starkiller, despite the Force Adept's attempt to reason with him. Starkiller fought back, unleashing a telekinetic shove to throw all the gang members off their feet and attacking them with his lightsaber before they could recover. Starkiller continued down the tunnel, suddenly coming out into the gang's base camp. Using telekinesis and blast deflections from a salvaged quad laser cannon, Starkiller brought down portions of the roof, spreading chaos amongst the already disorganized gang members. Roosh himself attempted to flee with his jetpack, but Starkiller knew that the salvage's knowledge of his involvement in Kazdan Parata's death made him a liability. Starkiller grasped Roosh and redirected his flight towards the ceiling, completely collapsing the roof of the junk hall. Exiting the sewers near the ore cannon, Starkiller began plotting out a plan of attack, but ultimately decided don't think. Just do. As he carved his way through the installation, he started dwelling on the limits of his knowledge and powers. All that he could do was kill and destroy. He had no knowledge of any higher levels of mastery. Coming to understand that ruling the galaxy took more than brute force, he realized that the power of Darth Vader and the Emperor came from fear. As he climbed higher and higher through the massive cannon's inner workings, Starkiller was suddenly ambushed by a shadow guard. Starkiller managed to fend off the guardsmen, and it fell back. However, the guard's hollow shroud suddenly dissolved, revealing it to be proxy. The holodroid had judged that Starkiller was at his most vulnerable at this point, and thus he sought to fulfill his primary programming by killing the apprentice. Proxy attacked, switching between combat modules based on Maris Brood, Shark T and Ram Kota, in addition to the Shadow Guard. However, Starkiller's experience against the actual individuals rendered the modules ineffective, and Starkiller demanded that Proxy back down, as he simply had no one that he hadn't already defeated. It was then that Proxy revealed one module that he had kept secret for years the Dathomirian Zabrak Sith Lord Darth Maul. Using this new module, Proxy was able to catch Starkiller off guard, but he was ultimately outclassed. As they engaged in a flurry of blade work, Proxy retreated onto an overhead gantry, pursued by Starkiller. As their battle renewed on the platform, Starkiller managed to cut Proxy's double-bladed lightsaber in half. Proxy, now holding two lightsabers, overbalanced on the platform's outer edge, almost falling off of the ore cannon superstructure, but Starkiller grabbed hold of the droid's lightsaber hilts, pulling him back. Holding Proxy by his weapons, Starkiller flung Proxy against a large pipe, disarming the droid before rushing and impaling him with the two lightsabers. With Proxy defeated and pinned against the pipe, Starkiller continued up to the ore cannon's top deck. Once there, 
he circled around the cannon's muzzle, overloading the railgun tracks to redirect its fire. His efforts proved successful and the ore cannon fired into the shipyard above, destroying it completely. However, there was a complication. One of the Star Destroyers survived the explosion and began plummeting towards the surface of Rax's Prime, directly at the ore cannon. Unable to get clear in time, Starkiller was advised by Kota to do something that even he judged to be insane. Telekinetically pull the Star Destroyer out of the sky into a controlled crash. Initially considering this idea impossible, Starkiller ultimately opted to attempt it when reminded that compared to the force, size and mass meant nothing. Focusing entirely on the cruiser, Starkiller began to adjust its flight path. He had to correct on his initial changes, as he didn't want it to tumble or break apart. As Starkiller pulled the destroyer down, he began to panic as the scale of his action started to overwhelm him, and he tried invoking his childhood name Galen. However, this produced no answer, so he instead did it for Eclipse. The Star Destroyer smashed into the surface just short of the ore cannon, spreading a literal tsunami of junk across the surrounding area. The destroyer continued to skid across the surface towards the cannon, despite Starkiller's attempts to break it, and Starkiller leapt off the cannon deck as the starship crashed into it. Starkiller managed to survive the devastation, extricating himself from the rubble and answering Kota's frantic comms. As he regained his feet, he heard a disturbance behind him, drawing his lightsaber and facing it. It was proxy. Damage during his duel with Starkiller and in the destruction caused by the Star Destroyer crash, portions of his processor had been burned out, erasing his primary programming. Bereft of his guiding directives, Proxy felt that he had been rendered useless and asked to be left behind to which Starkiller adamantly refused to do.